dreamers that we all get it Don't give in to the pain, just keep living cause What's up guys, it's Toby Rosario and in today's video I wanted to talk about uh, what you should bring to a seller appointment. It's a pretty common question. What should you take on your first seller appointment or your fifth or your tenth, whatever the case is. All right, we'll go ahead and get started. But before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification somewhere around here where you get, uh, that way you get notified whenever I post a new video. Also, give this video a like, give this video a thumbs up. It does help with the algorithm. Um, but we'll go ahead and get started. Also, if this is your first time, comment below first time. That way I know if this is your first time here, we can engage in some conversation in the comments below. But we'll go ahead and get started. So number one, let me move this here so you guys can see that. So number one is confidence. You want to bring confidence, your confidence, right? And why do I say that? I feel as though um, if you go in there, if you go to this seller appointment to meet a seller, um, and you don't sound like you're, uh, like you know what you're talking about, you might lose the deal, right? I remember my first ever, ever, ever sell appointment. Um, I'd done all the studying on YouTube. I've done all the research. And you know what? I just felt, I just told myself, I have to go in there and fake it till I make it, right? In, in a sense that I have to know, like I, I know what I'm talking about. I have to sound like I know what I'm talking about. And what I say, I have to sound confident saying it. Right, because if you don't, um, you know, the gonna they're gonna understand that. They're gonna read that vibe off of you. They're gonna be able to tell, like, oh, this guy's not experienced as I thought he was, or whatever the case is. So you want to take your confidence, and, and confidence comes with um, just just uh, knowing what you should be telling and taking control of the conversations, taking control of the the appointment, right? Guiding the conversations, building rapport. Um, and things like that. So for me, the number one thing you should bring to a seller appointment is confidence. Number two, what you should bring is obviously a contract. Okay. And then we'll get to the other ones, but obviously you want to bring a contract. Again, this, these are all simple things, but this sometimes it gets overlooked. But um, So you should definitely bring a contract because your intention, your expectation when you go to the seller appointment is to get the contract signed, right? Um, you, you you obviously probably spoke to the seller over the phone. You got a little bit of a, a an idea of what the seller situation is, if if it, it if it can be a deal or not. You understand that if you go on a seller appointment, um, you you try to expect to get that contract, right? You you put it in your mind that you expect to get the contract, so you obviously take the contract um, because you don't want to leave the property without getting a signed contract. Does it always work out that way? No, right? It doesn't always work out the way. Sometimes the seller is just crazy. Um, you know, so it's not always good. It's like you're not going to bat 100 for 100, right, whenever you go to these seller appointments. But obviously, you would take a contract to a seller appointment. Number three, you need to take your numbers. My, my handwriting is terrible. Uh, so numbers. You need to know your numbers. You need to know what your as is price is going to be, what your maximum allowable offer is going to be, MAO. I have several videos on how you can come up with that number. Every market is different, but um, but you want to know your numbers in that area. You want to know what investors are willing to pay and what you need to get it on the contract for where you can make a profit. Does that make sense? So you want to go in there having your numbers, having your numbers set, right? And another thing I want to point out is you don't don't be afraid to lose a deal. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by that? Sometimes, especially in the beginning, uh, I know I've, I've dealt with in the beginning. You want you want to um, you want to make a deal, right? But you don't make a deal. A deal is made. Does that make sense? Right? I don't know if that may, if I kind of threw you off. So like you don't want to be. You want to stick to your numbers, right? Because you know what what you need to get the price, you, where you need to be at in order for you to make a profit, and where you you know you can sell it for where the buyer can make a profit as well so you don't want to um overprice the deal because you want to get a deal right you don't want to go in there and like if your number your maximum allowable offer is 50 and the seller says no i can i can take 55 and you go in there and you put it at 55 because you just want to get this deal done um 
and then you you put it on the contract and then you can't find a buyer who's willing to pay for it, right? Then you don't you overprice the deal. So that's why you can't sell it. And you went in there uh, trying to make a deal, right? As is, if you went in there with knowing what you could pay, and, and if the seller is not budging, then the seller is not budging and you walk away, right? Don't be afraid to lose a deal because you don't want to put yourself in a situation where you put it on the contract and then you can't uh, perform, right? You can't compete for the seller and you can't find a buyer and then you're, you're stuck in the middle because you have this property on the contract and you can't sell it. And you told the, the seller that you were going to get this, you were going to buy the property off of them and, and then you're not, you're not able to close yourself or you're not able to find an, an buyer. So you want to remember, stay firm, know your numbers, don't be afraid to walk away, right? I think that's very important. In the beginning, you always want to, I, I know it's, you get like anxious, you feel like you, oh, I can make it work, but men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Remember that. That's my time. My name is Toby Peace.